Welcome to the Outer Worlds. We are on the second part of our final mission, final quest, I think, uh, coming right into the end of the game. So we just did a uh, pretty big boss fight against this big robot here, and I just barely got through it. So if you uh, like the game, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you want to see more of these. So let's continue on. I think we need to uh, head over here. And we're gonna work our way up. Oh, we have a hibernation chamber key from that robot. Okay, so we can we can get up through here. I wouldn't mind finding a workbench, actually, so I can repair my weapons. We definitely need some serious ammo. Which I wonder if there's a lot of bots down here. Let's see if we can loot them. And get some more ammo. So if you don't mind, because I used a ton of ammo. Used up all my heavy ammo. So kind of panicking, uh, fighting, fighting this guy. But we killed a whole pile of drones. Is that it? Oh, we had some more. I guess a lot of them disappeared. All right, that should do it. That's her. That was easy. Level up. So we took Sophia down. You were a lot easier than the robot. Let's see if we can free Wells here. How did we get in to help him? I thought I just used the key. Uh, oh, pull this lever. You don't know how glad I am to see you. You did the right thing. Akande was a monster. Her death was much deserved and long overdue. And you, you lunatic, you broke into the board's own fortress just to rescue one doddering old man. You are absolutely out of your mind. And I can't begin to thank you enough. No problem, buddy. So, are you all right? Are you kidding? Yeah, I wouldn't let anything happen to you, Phineas. I know, my friend, I know. And now it's finally over. The board's finished. It's only a matter of time before the entire system slips from their grasp. You've broken the board's stranglehold on this colony, and you saved my life. But there's still so much we have yet to accomplish. You and I are going to have to work harder than ever to save Halcyon. I'm afraid the situation is far worse than any of us ever anticipated. That doesn't sound good. Earth has gone dark. We haven't received a single message in three years. There's been no communication, no signals, nothing. Two years ago, the Earth's Directorate's frigate disappeared on their way back to Earth. We don't know what they discovered when they arrived, or if they arrived at all. They haven't exactly been hands-on around here anyway. So there's one less rubber stamp to worry about. 
Earth is humanity's home planet, Miss Fenhill. The psychological effects of losing our original home will be devastating. So we've got to make do on our own. Seems to me that'll make us stronger in the end anyhow. You're quite right. We've got no choice but to make do on our own. We're in serious trouble, my friend. Do you know what this means for Halcyon? We can't rely on Earth for support anymore. We've been cut loose. We're entirely on our own. Well, we got a lot of work ahead of us. We better get started. But, let me ask you something. Yes, yes, certainly. I'll help however I can. What do you think happened? I don't know what happened, but something must have gone horribly wrong. I don't know why Earth's gone silent. I don't even know if Earth exists anymore. We have no connection back to Earth, and return is likely impossible. We're completely alone out here. Well, I get the drift. We've got work to do. Yes, we do. You've done a marvelous thing. You've succeeded where anyone else would have failed, including me. We must begin the revival process immediately, starting with the hopes of brightest minds. And then we're going to fix this damn colony, one problem at a time. We're going to need a leader, and I can't imagine a better person for the job than you. What do you say, old friend? Will you help us? Oh, let's see. Uh, with the chairman in my pocket, no one's going to know I'm running the colony. I'll run it myself. Mm, I'll just say, you can count on me. Or, well, no, let's see. Yeah, you can count on me. I can't tell you how glad I am to hear that. <sighs> when I revived you, I thought we were going to save this colony all by ourselves, but I was wrong. We can't save Halcyon on our own. We're all going to have to pull together, somehow. We are not a colony anymore. Our last connection to Earth has been severed. I don't know if we'll survive, but we're going to have to try our best. This is so much like the Expanse. The whole idea of moving out into the solar system, or this would be some other system, with the jump drive and then getting cut off. The OSI teaches that everything in the universe happens according to the grand plan. But the stranger that arrived in Halcyon was an unplanned variable. From the moment he landed in Emerald Vale, his actions altered the course of history. The events on Tartarus brought about the end of the board's authority. But the board's mistakes would haunt the colony for decades to come. The damage they left behind would require the work of a generation to repair. Dr. Phineas Wells began reviving a handful of the Hope's colonists. Engineers, scientists, technicians, and intellectuals. They were among the brightest minds the Earth had ever sent out into the stars. The Hope scientists and engineers woke up in a colony descending headlong into total collapse. With no way to return to Earth, they had no choice but to band together and devote themselves to the cause of saving Halcyon. The people of Halcyon were nothing if not hardy. In the absence of the board's authority, many of the colony's settlements banded together with a single purpose in mind, survival. Life was especially hard in the years to come. Some towns dissolved by attrition and starvation, but most of them found a way to carry on. In the years to come, Halcyon was forced to reckon with its newfound freedom. The board was gone, and for better or worse, the colony was responsible for its own destiny. As the colony struggled to survive, the inspirational story of the Iconoclasts spread like wildfire, and Graham was able to bring many of the smaller Terra 2 townships into the fold. However, his zealous obsession with spreading the word blinded him to the needs of a growing organization, 
and the movement was unsustainable at scale. The iconoclast way seemed to work best and ultimately petered out on Monarch. Consumed by paranoia, Lilia Hagen took Sublight Salvage in a controversial direction, openly accusing board officials of an extraterrestrial conspiracy. One day, an accident at the Groundbreakers' docking bay silenced her forever. Time would tell if her replacement could keep the Sublight family together. Adelaide McDevitt replaced Reed Thompson as the leader of Edgewater. She and her followers transformed Edgewater in their image. Anyone loyal to Reed was pressured into leaving town, and those who stayed behind adapted to her way of life. Adelaide transformed the old cannery into a new garden. The nearby Edgewater Cemetery provided a convenient source of fertilizer. As for Reed Thompson, it was said that he lasted exactly two days outside the walls of Edgewater. Years later, a marauder was found in possession of his hat. Under the leadership of June Lay Tennyson, the groundbreaker held firm against corporate influence. The ship's mechanical stability gave June Lay the time to educate a promising generation of engineers schooled in her family's traditions. The future of the groundbreaker looks promising. The rediscovery of the hope and the abandonment of the lifetime employment program forced Byzantium to come to terms with some uncomfortable realities about the state of Halcyon. While Byzantines were reluctant to surrender the luxuries they'd grown accustomed to, the board's diminished authority gave them little choice in the matter. Nearly everyone had to learn to make do with less. Some even had to get jobs. It was a dark time indeed. Your influence shifted Ellie's perspective. She finally admitted, albeit grudgingly, that she just might need other people. Sometimes. With a steady income from the life insurance payouts, she was finally able to afford a ship of her own. She hired a small crew and flew supply missions to communities on the fringe. Some of them were even legal. Life in Halcyon was sobering for Felix Melstone. The grand revolution he dreamed of never came. There was no great awakening for the colony, no celebrations in the streets. There was only the hard, desperate work of trying to repair a broken colony. Felix never had a head for numbers, but if there was labor to be done, he was there to help. Eventually, Felix realized that the work of a revolution was done with two hands. As much as he enjoyed his adventures aboard the Unreliable, the vicar known as Max eventually decided that it was time to move on, to live out the life he had sought so long to create. He knew there were many in the colony who carried burdens much worse than the ones he had struggled with, and he devoted himself to easing their suffering wherever he could. He only ever took up arms again to defend the defenseless. Unshackled from a lifetime of striving and fighting the universe and himself, Vicar Maximilian de Soto was finally at peace. Once the matter with the Hope colonists was resolved, June Lay bashfully asked Parvati if she'd like to join her permanently on the Groundbreaker, and Parvati enthusiastically, if somewhat awkwardly, agreed. The stories of her adventures spread across the colony, and Parvati soon found herself the center of attention. Having served as the engineer of a renowned spacecraft, tramp freighters and wildcat miners sought her out by name. And in no time, she was a fixture in the Groundbreaker's mechanical ecosystem. She and June Lei were never far apart. Nioka returned to Monarch to take another crack at making a permanent life for herself. She formed the Charon Group, a mercenary outfit of ragtag survivalists and wilderness experts. Anyone in need of a guide or just looking to throw back a beer and swap stories could find her camping on the trail or clearing an infestation. The SAM unit that accompanied you spread awareness of the product line's superior sanitation and maintenance capabilities across what was left of the colony. This led to a boost in SAM unit sales. 
Did you know that SAM units are the longest lasting, toughest acting cleaning solution in Halcyon? Minister Clark was released from house arrest and his contact with you gave him a sense of renewed purpose and vigor. Once it became clear that no help would be coming from Earth, he threw his considerable efforts and talents into helping Halcyon manage the crisis before it. Chairman Rockwell served as the public face for the changes in Halcyon to come. Whenever you needed strings pulled or a voice to sell a policy change, Rockwell was only too happy to oblige. As for Dr. Phineas Wells, he spent his remaining years in his orbital lab. Though he was always haunted by the failures of his past, he was determined to make things right by building toward the future. Dr. Wells was able to revive many more scientists and engineers than he first expected, thanks to the additional batch of chemicals you stole from the Ministry. Wells never forgot about the human lives that were lost in acquiring these chemicals. The revival project was hard and painful work, but in the end, despite limited resources, over half the Hope's colonists were successfully revived. Even after Wells passed away, the Hope scientists and engineers worked night and day to pull Halcyon from the brink of collapse. Their efforts continue to this day, which may be reason enough for optimism. Dr. Wells laid the groundwork for the project to save the colony, but he would never live to see the fruits of his labor. He passed away a few years later. His work was carried on by the scientists and engineers he revived. Life will never be the same in Halcyon. It is widely agreed that the colony has a chance of stabilizing within a generation, owing to the hard work and determination of the surviving colonists. Recovery is a distant goal, and the path is long and uncertain. But the people of Halcyon carry on, determined as ever. And what about you, the unplanned variable in the history of Halcyon? Long after Wells passed away, you carried on his work with more energy, determination, and brilliance than he could ever muster. The years that followed were hard, but Halcyon survived by the efforts of the Hope's most promising colonists, the greatest of which was you. No one knows what's happened to Earth, and no one knows what the future has in store for Halcyon. All we know for certain is this. The name of the unreliable and that of its intrepid captain will remain the subject of countless stories for years to come. Well, that was an excellent recap. And that was an interesting recap, actually. Um, all the things that they talked about during the recap were really based around the decisions that we made throughout the, the game. And you can see there are a bunch of branches in the game uh, depending on what you decided to do at different, uh, different moments. So we had some people that we sent away, some people that we killed and so on, some people that we promoted. Um, and then even how we treated each one of our companions. And it was really nice that they had kind of a wrap-up uh, story for each one of the companions uh, based on what we had done with them. So when you're playing through the game, I'd really recommend doing like all the... Uh, uh, you don't have to do all the side missions necessarily, but, but it's, it's definitely handy for the wrap-up here. Uh, but do all the companion quests. Uh, that can make a difference, I think, uh, to the game. And overall, fun game really fun game I really enjoyed my uh, my time playing it uh, I think it's really uh, worthwhile playing for sure and uh, had all the elements I think that uh, that I really enjoy enjoying games I, I like sort of a story driven game uh, first person shooter sci-fi kind of aspect and it really had these tie-ins to other games that I've really uh, enjoyed a lot follow four borderlands um, and the TV show the expanse like it reminded me a lot of these these types of things. Um, interesting artwork. Um, at first I wasn't a hundred percent sure of it with the uh, with the artwork being a little bit on the cartoony side but I got used to it quite uh, quickly through playing the game. And the game mechanics definitely were good. Responsiveness was good so I'd recommend it. I think this is a, 
a really, really worthwhile game. So I hope you enjoyed coming on the journey here of doing the, uh, the whole walkthrough or playthrough of this game uh, for the first time. It's me going in blind, not knowing anything about it. I'm not even that great of a gamer, so uh, hopefully my, my bad combat skills uh, weren't too frustrating for you to watch. But I hope it also gives you uh, kind of a motivation to go out and uh, try the game out for yourself. I think you'd find it uh, really, really enjoyable. Well, if you did enjoy it, please give this video a thumbs up. really helps out a lot. And uh, comment. Uh, tell me what you thought of the game. If you're going to try the game. And if uh, you know it's something uh, that you would enjoy, this type of thing. Is the story-driven mode good? Or do you really prefer... Uh, PvP type action, um, you know, what uh, what uh, is kind of the best approach for this kind of game in your opinion. And uh, also subscribe. If you subscribe then I'll be able to put more of these uh, playthroughs uh, on. Uh, I've got a number of games in the pipeline here that I'm wanting to uh, set up. And uh, that'd, be, uh, that'd be really helpful for us too. If you like, comment, and subscribe. So, thanks again for watching, and we'll see you in the next series. Um, also, put in the comments too what games you think I should try based on the kind of stuff that I like uh, from my commentary going on through here. So, let me know, and I'll see. Uh, I'll see if I can get a copy of it and do a run through on this channel. Now, I'm going to let the credits play out here just to see if there's any uh, end scenes afterwards. So you can watch or not watch, fast forward if you want. But either way, thanks very much for watching. If you watched through the whole series, thanks so much for doing that as well. And we'll see you in the next video and the next series.